turn to that same person and say, I want to be your best friend, and also let's go to lunch together. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. It is my blessed opportunity to just take you through a couple things that are here in the bulletin and worship guide, specifically uh, some things that are a little out of the ordinary. One of them is that today is the day for the very first ever Mount Olive District of the Global Methodist Church that is a, a worship service. For the first time, people from all over this region are gathering together at Pine Valley Methodist Church, and we're gonna be treated to a, a beautiful time of coming together for the first time with our brothers and sisters. If you're not part of uh, the official Methodist Church, you're not part of the official uh, Mount Olive District, you're still welcome to come. If you're just curious about what God is doing in this area, the, the bus that is taking people there is filled. The van, not so much. We had some people that couldn't come today. And so if you're interested in a ride to Pine Valley this afternoon, the bus and van will leave at 325. We just need to know if you would like to ride on the van so that we could make sure we have a driver and we're all ready to go. Otherwise, we'll just meet you there. Hopefully most of you will just want to meet us there. This is a beautiful rainy day for us to go indoors and worship together with our sisters and brothers. So, also, I want to thank the facilities team and friends for spending a bunch of time yesterday doing work around this facility. They cleaned and they picked up and they reordered and they built and all kinds of important things that makes this a nice facility. And I thank you for doing that. You did a great job. We need all hands on deck. There are also, if you noticed in the newsletter that just came out on Thursday, and there are some copies out here and out there, uh, for those of you who don't have this online, this is fresh information. There's a front page article from me about becoming members of Sharon Methodist Church. Some of you have asked me about becoming members of Sharon Methodist Church. Everything you need to know is on the front page of the new newsletter. But there is, as this says, there is a sign-up sheet for you to say, yes, I do want to become a member of Sharon Methodist Church. All you need to do is pick up these two documents that are next to that sign-up list. You can take those home, read them over. There's a couple of times where we're going to go over those documents. Again, all this information is in the newsletter. Some of you want to become first-time members. You've never been a member of a church before. Some of you, for different reasons, want to transfer your membership from another congregation to Sharon because this is your new church home. And some of you were grandfathered or grandmothered into membership here because you were members of Sharon United Methodist Church. And you would like to just go ahead and say, yeah, I'm proud to now be a member of Sharon Methodist Church. And we'll get you a certificate and everything. But uh, read all about that. It's about our identity as a church family. It's about what God is doing. And it's about us being able to say, thank you, Lord, for not giving up on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice also on the inside of the bulletin, there's information about a VBS, I guess that's what we call it here, VBS planning session. If you're interested in VBS and making sure we have excellent programs for the kids this summer, please come and share your ideas. There is not at this time anybody that's in charge of VBS. I'm probably looking at whoever's going to be in charge. You're out there someplace. You just haven't put your hand up yet. But we know that we've got people here that love children, and we have children that love to learn about Jesus. So that's a pretty good match. And then lastly, I would just say, please join us in praying for the following people. And they are listed on the inside of the bulletin. There's probably a prayer book making its way in here. 
<laughs> Debbie's been out bringing people in in the rain. How about that? Thank you for Miss Hospitality. Thank you for that. This week, join us in praying for Linda Long, Johnny Smith, Lisa Glass, Joyce Lowermore, Arl Hewitt, Doug Legon, Virginia Dixon, Michael Harrell, Dean and Pat Drawn, Steve Whitfield, the family of Logan Hewitt, James Hobbs, Iris Bellamy, Tom Jones, and just this morning for Donnie Kirby, we're Paulette, going to be on going on a mission trip this week. The family of Michael Simmons, Lisa Glass, and I think that says Brian Mintz. Correct? Brian Mintz. And the persecuted Christian church in the world that we are lifting up this week in our prayer focus of the people in Tunisia who are our brothers and sisters. Lord, I thank you for giving us this chance to be together. Truly, you are a good God. You are worthy of our highest praises. And so now we turn our hearts over to worship, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. I invite you to stand if you're able and be praising and worshiping our God, our King. Please feel free to sit at any time if you need to.
your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come. King of heaven, rise up, who can stand against us? You are strong to save.
Jesus. Hallelujah. We honor you in all that we do. We love you, Lord. Yes. And we pray that you accept this sacrifice of praise. Yes. For what it is, our love offering to you Thank today. You, Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You. Amazing love. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. I invite the kids to come on up. And today, I specifically want you to sit here. Sit here in the front row because we have a special guest who is going to tell you about something very special that God is doing. And she's going to share with you today this our friend, Miss Paulette. You good say, morning. good morning, Miss Paulette. Everybody could say that. Yeah, that's just like at school. Let's all say it. Good morning, Miss Paulette. Good morning, everyone. How gonna, are you today? I'm going to sit down and let you just share. Okay. So I'm really excited to be up here with you guys today because I have some really good news to share with you. This week, I am taking a trip to the Dominican Republic. You know where that is? Any idea? It's really far from here. And I'm going to take a plane, and I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to help some people. And I'm really excited because I'm, oops, I'm going to bring this with me. Do you know what this is? A hammer, exactly. And I'm going to bring this with me so that I can help them build a house for a family because there are a lot of families in the Dominican public that have nowhere to live. So we're gonna go down there and we're gonna build them a house. And it's gonna be a beautiful house. It's gonna have bedrooms for the children and a lock on the front door and windows. So we're really excited to be able to help others. And if you look on the, up on the screen, look over there, there's a picture of a house that we built last year and the family that's living in it. So we're really, really excited to be able to help other people. And some of the other things that we're going to be doing down there is we're going to be building relationships. And I'm going down there with something very special. God's love in my heart. My, my God put God love in my heart for me to help other people. And we're going to go down there and we're going to build a house. And last week I got the news that our boxes that we shipped have arrived. And we've delivered 30 barrel boxes of clothing, food, and housewares distribute this to all the people down there. So we're really, really excited to be down there and helping these people that need so much. And I also am happy to say today that I bought a gift for you guys. And everyone can take one. I'll pass it up here. And after church, there's enough in there for everybody. And what I brought are bracelets. And I got these bracelets in the Dominican Republic and I want everyone to take one. And if you look at them, there are 10 beads on the bracelet. And these 10 beads mean that 10 people in the Dominican Republic pray for the person that's wearing this bracelet. So I want you guys to wear it for two reasons. One, so people will pray for you. And two, I want you to wear it. And in the next two weeks while I'm away, when you see your bracelet, I want you to pray for me and the other missionaries and all the people that were helping. Could you do that for us? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. And I'd like to pray with you. Will you pray with me? Lord, you have called your servants to reach the needy and the poor. And I ask that you surround them with your favor. Grant them access to the places you know they need to be and open doors for them that, they, that only you can. Place them in the right place in the right time so that they may accomplish everything you have for them. I pray that you will strengthen the faith of your missionaries so that they can witness many miracles in the lives of others. As they read and hear your word, may their faith grow. Surround them with others that will encourage their faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> All right. 
You're leaving Wednesday. Wednesday. So this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So you probably have a lot of praying to do, a lot of work to do, a lot of stuff to do. Getting there psyched up. And so we're going to pray. Debbie's here on behalf of our missions and outreach team. And if you would, please just reach your hand out and join in this blessing. I know that might sound strange to you, but go ahead. It's okay. You can reach your hand out. Yeah, God will honor that. Lord, we pray your blessings upon Paulette that she encounters as she makes her way through airports, uh, through transportation that we probably would be surprised that she's riding on. We pray for not just her safety, but mostly for the boldness of her witness, that she would enjoy every moment of that, that she would rise to every challenge, that she would just breathe through checkpoints, and that she would bring the love of Jesus, as she says. Give her the desire of her heart, Lord. Rekindle old relationships and help her to make new ones. We pray all of this with confidence, knowing that you have planted her here right now for such a time as this. In the name of Jesus, amen. a big deal. Let's pray some more. God, you've given us a chance to just taste your kingdom today. Your kingdom does not have any boundaries except for the boundaries of the human heart. And so I thank you for all the different ways you're tearing down those boundaries, that you are opening wide the possibilities of the growth of your kingdom. It's a it's a kingdom of kindness. It's a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of mercy. It's a kingdom of justice. It's a kingdom of salvation. And we are excited as a church family to be able to not only participate in this vicariously through Paulette, perhaps, Lord, you'd raise some of us up to want to join her next time. We want your will to be done. We want your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We come to you together in faith, joining our hearts, joining our prayers, with people all around the world who are celebrating you today. We're worshiping you in all kinds of different ways. We know there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's hope, there's one salvation. Thank you for that salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. His death, his resurrection, and the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on this earth. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing that we might face the, the things in this world that would cause us to doubt you, would cause us to give up in our mission. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing that we may show love and compassion and mercy to people in our neighborhood, in this region, in this nation, and in the world. Lord. What this world needs is Jesus. And you have given yourself to us. You've given us the blessed opportunity to be witnesses for your kingdom. Help us to be brave, Lord. Help us to not miss any opportunities that you're giving. To be your voice, to be your feet, to be your hands. I pray that this afternoon's worship service in Wilmington would be a great outpouring of joy after a season of difficulty and challenge. Thank you that we've been able to define ourselves here as people that stand on the word of God. Lord, this church is founded on your, your word. And everything we do, we do in the name of Jesus, empowered by your spirit. Of course, Lord, as always, we lift before you in intercession for the sick, for the oppressed, for the victims of injustice and hatred, for the victims of racism, for the victims of hunger and disease and poverty. Father, we know that you can do what we can't, but we do ask that any time we can, help us to partner with you in the mission of bringing back lost people into the world where you are king, where you are Lord where healings happen, where reconciliation happens, where joy happens, and where we experience, indeed, 
the outpouring of the love of God. And now, as part of that outpouring, we return to you the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. I invite our ushers to come forward at this time as we participate in the giving and receiving of our tithes and offerings. Lord, truly you have made us glad because we are your children. We joyfully dedicate these tithes and offerings to the furthering of your kingdom here on earth until your near return. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Now let's join together in saying what we believe in the Nicene Creed. Believe in one God. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, 
He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, Peace from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. be seated.
This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 40, verses 1 through 5. And this is written by David. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. This is a word of God for the people of God. I will be reading from the book of Acts in the New Testament, chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. And the context here is that a risen Jesus Christ is speaking to a gathering of about 120 of his disciples before ascending to heaven to be with the Father. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who's been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. It's the word of God for the people of God. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and other mouths that will be speaking this morning are pleasing and acceptable to you. You are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This is part three of an eight-part series we're working through titled Ancient Future Church. It's lessons that come out of the book of Acts about things that happened in the early church in the first century that will inform the 21st century Christian church especially in the United States. The situations that we find ourselves in are parallel to the situations those folks found themselves in as fewer and fewer people know Jesus in our society. We are interacting with people that we cannot assume already know the Lord or even ever have heard of the Lord other than in uh, profanity. In the early days after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus got those disciples together. He told them to stay put, stay in Jerusalem where it's safe for now until 
they would receive power through the Holy Spirit. And they did that. They stayed in the upper room, but they did receive power at Pentecost. And we'll celebrate that in a few weeks. They did receive power. He said, but once they'd been empowered by the Holy Spirit, they would be his witnesses. They would be telling the stories of the power of God through the ministry of Jesus Christ. First in Jerusalem, then in Judea, which is a wider community, then in Samaria, pushing out into places where people really didn't even adhere to Judaism, and then to the ends of the earth. They would do that. They would witness to the people as they pushed out into new geographic regions with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God had been doing extraordinary things among them, and they had stories to tell. That's so important. God was doing extraordinary things among them, and they had stories to tell about what they had witnessed we saw that. We could tell you about it. The early church was built largely on those testimonies as followers of Jesus bearing witness to God's mighty works just shared that good news. That's how the church was built. People telling their stories about their encounter with the living God. This morning, I've invited one of us, Melissa Sellers, to come up here and use this lectern as a witness stand. Come on up, Melissa. You might know her as Mel. She's going to give a witness to God in her life. Now, I have challenged Melissa. To do this in three minutes because we want this to be replicatable for all of us and so Melissa my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would use your testimony to change hearts and lives even in this moment God is with you we're all praying for you as you speak to us I'm gonna go be Thank an you. audience member. wow this is much different than when I was practicing in front of Snoopy and Max my cat and dog but good morning and I don't do, haven't had much experience public speaking, but I want to honor God today, tell you my story. Good morning. My name is Melissa Sellers, and I'm a child of God. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. My childhood was pretty dark, with a lot of physical and sexual abuse. At the time, I blamed God. So I spent my, most of my adult life self-destructing with every earthly sin, which left me broken with shame and despair. I felt like the walking dead my entire life. A couple years ago, I told my husband, Levi, I finally have everything I wanted, but I had no idea how to enjoy it because the only way I knew how to live was in survival mode, which meant fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I knew I needed help and wanted to change my toxic behaviors, but I had no idea how. One day, I met a lady walking my dog. About a month after meeting her, I asked her if she went to church, and she said yes. So I asked if I could go the following Sunday with her. And that's when I came here to Sharon Methodist Church in May of 2022 of last year. The first sermon I heard our pastor speak was Break the Chains of Addiction. I remember getting chills, and for the first time that day, I felt God. It was uncomfortable and awkward at first because I had no idea how to receive love, nor did I understand that I deserved it. But I kept coming back. I got into the Bible every day, and I still do. I asked our pastor and other members of this church some very hard questions, which in return, oh, sorry, was my, which in return, I was faced with some very hard truths about myself. But I figured out I finally had to go through my pain with God to get through my pain and start healing. In September 2022, I got baptized. And when I came out of that water, I felt every sin wash away. I felt the filth for my entire life wash away. I finally felt like a woman clothed in dignity and strength. I knew I was going to be transformation within me and I was barking on learning a life led with confidence. 
I suddenly felt over the holidays a burning of the Holy Spirit, who was only getting started in feelings of my healing. I felt freedom. I was becoming light. My mental health issues are the healthiest and most manageable they've ever been without medication. My physical health did a complete 180 degree turn. I have built the healthiest relationships in the last year that I've ever had in my entire life. I, I could see just a transformation in my heart and mind is night and day compared to a year ago. I could write a book on what Jesus has done for me in the past year alone, but also all he has done for me when I didn't even realize he was intervening in my past life because the only reason why I'm here breathing today is the grace of God. So even on my bad days, I'm okay because God carries me. Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now I know what this means. So if anyone has any further questions on my story, I'm always happy to answer them. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for helping me see my own helplessness. I was lost without you and didn't even realize it. But you not only opened my eyes to see my lack, you gave me your very self to feel me, restore me, and set me on a new path. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I kind of set myself up, didn't I? <laughs> Just think about the bravery, the vulnerability, and the, the love that that takes. That needs to be the new normal, not the exception. It's one thing to know about the power of God. It's another thing to have experienced the power of God. Do you know what I mean? We can read lots of books, take lots of lessons, sit in lots of classes, and never know or experience the power of God. Jesus didn't can't come to let us know about the power of God. Jesus demonstrated the power of God, and through the Holy Spirit invites us to be participants in the power of God for the kingdom of God to bring healing and reconciliation and wholeness to this lost world that needs a savior. Huh. I've generated a simple graphic. If you've been out there saying, wow, what would be a good way for me to put together a testimony of my own? Oh, we're going to show it here in a moment. Here it is. You can write this down if you want. It's no secret recipe for sharing about God's work in our lives. Uh, I just paraphrased what so many other people have taught me, what I've read about over the years. But here's the basic deal. It's three parts. There was a time in my life and just provide a couple of simple descriptor, descriptors. This is before Jesus. I was lonely. I was angry. I was depressed. I was full of myself. Whatever that happens to be. There was a time in my life. The second part is, and then I met Jesus. Maybe it's because of a book I read, or somebody introduced me to him personally, or... Perhaps a song that I heard on the radio. I met Jesus. I went to church and somebody told me about the gospel. So there was a time in my life, then I met Jesus, and then the third part, and now my life. I think we just heard this, right? And a couple of descriptors. Now my life, you can throw in words if it's applicable for you and accurate. I have joy in my life. I have peace in my life. I have victory in my life. I have a church family in my life. And I 
Don't care how much the world thinks that's strange. I want to give praise to God for that. Our testimonies are the future of successful ministry at this church. It has to be that. It has to come alongside these other good works that we're doing. Because we're doing a lot of good works here. But we're not sharing our personal testimonies as a normal part of church culture. And I'm inviting us all to think about that. Could we put together a three-minute, what we call elevator speech, not to just walk up to some total stranger and force our story on them, but if we've come into contact with somebody at work or in our neighborhood and we've begun to develop a little bit of a relationship, pray that the Holy Spirit opens up an opportunity to share. I wouldn't front load a relationship with this unless the Holy Spirit said to. But I think this should come into play as we're meeting people out there into this world because people need to know Jesus. They need to know Jesus. We all need to be ready to do it. If we're ever gonna see the lost saved and brought into the loving family of God. Hmm. We probably ought to use the witness stand more often. Some of you may volunteer and I'm way open to that, by the way. Uh, call me or see me, and if you can put together a three-minute testimony about witnessing the power of God in your life, let me know, and we can try it out together. My favorites are the ones that come from people that we've never heard from before. They just emerge. We just never knew their story, and that they've been sitting there the whole time, but nobody's ever asked them. Nobody's ever asked them. Jesus told his disciples that they would be his witnesses first in Jerusalem. What does our Jerusalem look like? Because this is not Israel, right? We're not probably going to move to Israel so that we can live this out as the disciples of Christ. Our Jerusalem, I think, is what we're doing right now. Within our church family, we can practice being witnesses on each other, right? It's very Wesleyan. John Wesley used to put people in little groups and they would get together weekly or a couple times a month and they would talk to each other about what God was doing in their lives. We need to be putting people together in little groups like that. Checking in with each other. I was thinking about this message a couple of weeks ago, I went to uh, praise team practice, and before practice, Tony over here, he walked up to me right here, and he said, Jim, what has the Lord Jesus done for you today? That was an awesome thing, because it put me on the spot for an answer. There this guy was, pointing at me, Pastor Jim, saying, Jim, what has the Lord Jesus done for you today? I think we all need to be able to answer that question. And we all need to be willing to ask anybody else in our church family that question. And it might stop us a little bit in our tracks for a while until we get used to it. I think we need to have a little check-in groups. We need to be creating that culture of having, and it might be something simple. It'll probably sound like what it sounds like a lot of times these days. Well, I woke up on the right side of the grass. <laughs> Let's just not use that one. That's overused. That might be a success story to somebody, and that's okay, that you woke up on the right side of the grass could sound something like this. I just realized how beautiful the birds are. In my case, I actually saw the power of God that very day when Tony asked me. Early in the morning, right after I got here to church, I found out Miss Nancy had called the church. She was scared because R.L. had had a health event. 
and it didn't sound good at all. It was a frantic thing, asking for the church to pray. I had just got done putting on Facebook a prayer request. A little while longer, I, I was talking to RL on the phone from the hospital. The reason he went to the hospital, he had been rendered speechless and yet there he was, talking. There he is right there. I am witnessing and I'm giving testimony to the power of God and the power of prayer and a praying wife and a praying church. And that happened that day. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean that was a pleasant day. That day was terrible and so was the next day. But God was moving. So Jerusalem, Judea, what does that look like? I think that's more of our personal spheres of influence, our neighborhoods, the people we work with, our friends, people that may or may not have a church home, people that we usually spend a lot of time with, but we don't talk about our faith. And they don't talk about their faith. That's our Judea. Our Samaria for us, I think, can be people in the community who don't necessarily have a church home, people who might be seeking the Lord, that the Holy Spirit might push us to say something to them, to reach out, send ourselves in friendship. Our Samaria, our people of peace that the Holy Spirit is working on. They just need the other side of that. We're a person of God that the Holy Spirit's working on them too. We can just meet together. Samaria is filled with people who are not in any church today, and they're not going to be unless somebody finds them and God puts them together with a family like this. It's our mission. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the ends of the earth. A week ago, I wouldn't have had a very good story. I would have had to say something like, well, we sent 200 and some shoebox gifts, right? That's pretty good. That's the ends of the earth. But this... This week, just the other day, our missions team met and agreed to sponsor a young missionary family who's doing work in Indonesia and other Muslim countries. They are from this area. They are from our Judea. And our missions team sponsored them this, this week. This just happened. They're going to reach the ends of the earth. They're working with Muslim countries all around the world. This past year, they spent most of their time working with the Ukrainian folks, trying to get them to safety. And we're touching that as a church family. We will hear from Matthew Ward and his, his wife this year as, when they come back. We'll meet them and we'll hear about the ends of the earth. And then secondly, Paulette. Paulette. Going to the Dominican Republic. Witnessing to our children before she comes. I'm sure a witness to the children when she comes back. You will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Would you join me in the weeks and the months and the years to come? And creating a culture more and more and more where we are not afraid to ask somebody, what is God doing in your life? And being ready to have somebody ask us, what did, you, what did the Lord Jesus do for you today? So that we become normalized in that. Normalized. We can replace, how was the weather? Did your ball team win? How about that politician? Could we replace that with a new thing that we're talking about? What is God doing amongst us? And how can we give God maximum glory as individuals, as families, as a church family? So that when I say, hey, we have an opportunity to go today to worship with a bunch of other like-minded global in at Pine Valley Church, you would all say, I'll see you there because that's where stories will be told. That's where memories will be made. That's where the power of God will be on And here on Sunday morning, and then in your home, 
and at your place of work on Wednesday afternoon. God is always doing something. And we get to be witnesses of that. And when we witness something, we have a testimony to share. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you have challenged us this way. But before you've challenged us, you blessed us. You called us. You called us out of this. You heard our cry. You reached down. You pulled us up out of the pit. You set our feet on solid ground. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. We sing your praises, God. How could we ever thank you enough? Thank you for Melissa's testimony. Thank you for the people in this church family that are part of that. Thank you that she will be the first fruits of this new season of telling our story. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for that powerful witness and thank you for today's message. Now we continue our celebration with our singing of Trust and Obey, found on page 467. Let us now all sing.
been a good morning with you. I know that God is on our side. If you do want a ride, we need to know today by having you sign up for the ride over here. And then if you're interested in those membership packets, they're at either one of these side entrances where you can just read about what it would become, what it will, means to become a part officially of Sharon Methodist Church. But we know that God is working. So enjoy this beautiful day. The sun is shining now. The birds are chirping. Rebuilding nests that we tore down yesterday. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and be blessed.